Good morning. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Amanda and I am about half-ish way through my weight loss journey doing carnivore, going from bed bound to now hiking six, eight miles. Today is going to be a day all about habits, what habits I do, things like that to have changed my journey, changed my perspective, and changed my mind along this journey so far. A lot of these are going to have nothing to do with food, but they directly impact how I feel about myself, which then impacts how I eat and take care of myself as well. First one, making the bed. The dog had already jumped on it, but I promise it was made nicely. Making the bed is a big one. It makes me feel like I'm getting a good start to my day, so then I feel good about myself, and it's something that takes less than a minute to do every morning. Another habit is I drink coffee every morning. Is it carnivore? No. Do I really care? No. But I put two, three drops of Lugol's iodine, a squirt of vanilla extract, and heavy cream in this. It helps because it's like a bridge drink. I don't actually eat breakfast till about 10, 30, 11 every day. Having the coffee kind of bridges me over from when I wake up 6, 6.30 in the morning to then 10.30 later in the day when I actually eat. It helps me. It is actually caffeine is an appetite suppressant, so it helps with all of that. Another habit that I do pretty much every morning that I found that works beautifully so I'm not sitting so much is I raise my desk up and I actually just push my chair underneath because it's out of the way and that way I stand as long as I need to at the computer and I'm not sitting all day hurting my bum. It's breakfast time. Let's see what magical breakfast Scott made for me today. Did you guess what it was? Because it's always the same pretty much. <laughs> two eggs, two pieces of bacon, vitamin hydroxychloroquine for the autoimmune, two vitamin D and fluoxetine, plus another cup of water. Bacon actually has some fairy dust on it, made it magical. Oh, fairy dust. Mm -hmm. mm. You can't see the fairy dust. It's oh, just no. There. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So it is a magical breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whilst working on habits, we've been reading the decluttering book, which is giving me the get rid of stuff bug. So yesterday while Scott was at D&D, I got some stuff done and then I spent the entire rest of the day going through all of our closets, reorganizing stuff, getting rid of stuff. And this is what I've gotten rid of so far. All of this lower stuff is going to be donated to my niece's school for a clothing bedding towel drive. My brother complained he didn't have pillows, so I got him some pillows. Then this is going to be going to the, it's not Goodwill, it is our... ASPCA animal thrift store thingy. So we're gonna donate all of that. We still need to go through that chest and see what is in there. Looking the dogs right now. And I just learned something about Scott I didn't know. He doesn't know how to whistle. So we've been walking and I've been teaching him how to whistle. Do it again. You actually did pretty good. <laughs> Love me you know that. You're the doggies on the doggy walk and I have one <laughs> boxing behind my legs mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we came to the graveyard grocery store to get some bleach and some zevia look at this stuff I used to drink this stuff as a kid Joan soda 46 grams of sugar in this. I used to drink the watermelon, I think, all the time. Look at this stuff. Oh, this one only has 31. Crazy.
fast, crazy how I got here, but I wouldn't trade it. So rash, told to take the cash, but I won't sell my dreams. Watch me while I make it. Suitcase living miles away, still haven't showered in days. Focus, ain't no time to waste. Know enough to know if there's a chance that I'ma take it. Got me like. Dinner is bone-in ribeye, again, with the spices that I made. They're delicious. If I find the recipe, I will put it in the description below. Good evening. I got kind of busy today, so I didn't do as much recording as I wanted to. But there was a couple habits that I wanted to additionally mention that I've been doing that have made a big impact. Reading every day. Since I started doing the 75 hard program I, I've read anyways just not consistently I have to say I feel much better about myself despite reading a book I feel better about myself I feel like I'm not stagnant my brain is growing I don't know I just feel like I'm being stretched as a human I just for me when I don't feel like I'm going anywhere in life and I don't mean like physically but just emotionally mentally as an individual if I'm not making progress in life I feel really kind of crappy about myself. And honestly, reading 10 pages a day, granted, it's just 10 pages. It actually makes me feel really good about myself, whether you read it, audiobook, whatever. Uh, that has been a big thing for me. The second thing that I didn't mention, because we went to the store today, not going to the store hungry. Talk about setting ourselves up for failure, being starving and going to the grocery store. Everything looks good. Now, the last time I did it, I don't do it much, hardly at all anymore. I may have left the store with a questionable item, which was like smoked Gouda with pepper dip sauce stuff. So there's that. <laughs> Not candy bars, thankfully. I guess that's a huge improvement, isn't it? Olive loves this. I have put some tallow on my skin and Olive just loves to try to lick it. That is a big help. 
Don't let yourself get to like the starving mode because then everything looks tasty. And then also not going to the grocery store hungry. Super good tips and habits I think to be in. Something else that has been really helping me with my stress. Hi Doe, you do not get to, you don't, no, no ma'am. Uh, something that's been helping my stress is doing my hardest thing that I put off throughout the day very first in the morning. It happens to be editing videos. It's not like difficult. It's a mental hurdle to get over that I do. At this point in time, I literally get a cup of coffee, go downstairs to the computer, 6 a.m., 6.30, edit video before anything else. The reason is, is it just kind of wears on my mind all day. If I have things to do, the dog is going crazy drinking water, sorry. If I have things to do, it's like, I have this like ticking time bomb in my head. It's like, Amanda, you have to do this. 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 And it just kind of wears on me emotionally all throughout the day. By doing it first thing, I'm done. Wash my hands, finish. Don't have to think about it till the next morning. So it may not obviously be editing videos and it may not be something you can do first thing in the morning, but don't avoid the hard things. I know this because I am the queen of procrastinating. Although I have been seriously working very hard on it, honestly, since I started carnivore, is not procrastinating. It just fills our mind up with worry that does not need to be there, with stress that does not need to be there. Sorry, I just keep, the tallow feels so good. I just keep rubbing my hands together. So it is, I okay, slightly off subject. Lavender Farms, I just tried this from Etsy. This is the honeysuckle, smells delicious. They're oatmeal and oatmeal honey. It is, it smells so good. If some of you, if you wanna try it, I have no affiliation with these people, be warned. It does smell like an oatmeal cookie. So if that's going to kind of make you want it, for me, I just get to smell like an oatmeal cookie and then I can envision myself eating it and then I'm done. So I get to eat my invisible, no calorie, <laughs> no carb, no sugar cookie every time I put the tallow on. <laughs> I have not eaten the tallow. I will not do that. <laughs> not sure how jojoba uh, oil does on the stomach. I don't want to figure that out either. Anyways, it is slightly greasy for about 30 minutes, but then your body will absorb all of this. I fell down the rabbit hole looking up like all the nutrients in tallow and it is crazy the amount of nutrients that are in tallow. It makes sense, you know, 100 years ago we did not have all these chemicals and stuff that we have in lotions and things like that. We, back to the basics, tallow. Anyways, that was a sidetrack. <laughs> What else today? Uh, grocery store, Costco. Um, I'm going to call Costco tomorrow because our Fred Myers, aka Kroger's, has no 4505 pork rinds. They only have the Baker's or uh, whatever one. They all, they don't even have the plain ones. They all have MSG, the spicy ones, the barbecue ones. They had no plain ones. And the other brand they had, second ingredient, MSG. MSG makes me feel so bad. I cannot even explain how bad I feel from it. I didn't go to Safeway. I'm probably going to try tomorrow to go to Safeway because I'm almost out of pork rinds. But our Costco last year had 4505, the chili lime ones, my favorite. And they have not had any pork rinds since. So I'm going to call tomorrow Costco. My question to you guys is, have any of you done this, like requested an item to be restocked or carried back at Costco? And if you have, how did you do it? Because I've got to figure it out. I downloaded the app and have not gotten anywhere. I will let you guys know going down this path where I can get and if you can do it too at your store because it's really nice. All they have are chips and more chips. And they had one thing that was like chicken breast, kind of like carnivore crisps, but they had so much sugar in them. I was like, hey, look, like $9 chicken breast things. But then I realized it was eight carbs per serving and it was like half an ounce or something it was ridiculous seven grams of added sugar too much too much and the rest of things are like potato chips and popcorn and this and it's like they have no options for us low carb folks anyways i will keep you posted on that tomorrow is tuesday we're gonna go hiking it's supposed to rain scott says we're just gonna hike in the rain not excited about that I don't really like hiking in rain and having extremely muddy dogs. 
but we'll see. Maybe I can time it where we go when it's not raining or before it rains. I don't know. Oh, I've been reading another book recently. I've been reading a lot of things recently, but it's this book called Mastering Mental Toughness by Jordan Williams. I don't want to get my tallow all over it. It is an, it's not even a big book. This is an excellent book. I've only made it yay far of yay far. So far <laughs> in the book, it is really, really good. I think I will tell you guys more about it. I'll tell you kind of the big thing I learned so far about it. At first I'm like, is this going to be a crazy book? Like, is this going to be a crazy birds and book? The first suggestion they have is they're having an alter ego. And I was like, I don't think, I don't think I need another personality. Mine is already big enough and I'm not even talking about my size. I got a big personality and I also have a very strong personality. <laughs> Alter ego. What they really mean is, is when you have emotional situations or situations where you don't feel like you can control your emotions, having a strongly ingrained vision of yourself, your ideal self. Like if I could make a perfect Amanda, I would be bold, brave. I mean, I am bold and brave for the most time, but I would be bold, brave. I wouldn't care about other people's opinions of me. If they said something, you know, nasty, it would just literally roll off of me. Now it takes a little bit of effort. I would, all these, I need to actually sit down and write down like the envisioned me. And when situations happen, a lot of times we get triggered because we have all this baggage in life, right? All the bad things that happen to us and things that just kind of, Literally, we get triggered by it. It's just like someone says something and it's just like that exact way that your mom said it one time that chewed you out and you're just like, almost like you're yelling at your mom, but you're yelling at the person instead kind of situation. And when we have these alter egos, <laughs> just bear with me. When we have this other envisioned part of ourselves. They are distanced from all that baggage that hasn't happened to them. They're the ideal version of us. So when something emotional comes up, we're like, okay, what would that perfect version of Amanda do? What would that perfect version of myself do in this situation? And that way we can set all of our baggage and all our triggers aside and go at the situation without being so emotional and upset and triggered. I'm still working on this. Don't have this down pat, but I thought it was a very interesting idea. What would the ideal version of myself do in this situation? Because it probably wouldn't go screaming their head off or stomp around mad, you know, like, it really does give us, a, I think, a perspective and a, an ability to step back if we can master it. That's about as far as I've gotten in the book. It's um, talking about like the four C's, control, confidence, something, something I already forgot. Obviously, I haven't made it that far, but I wanted to share it with you. It's a really interesting book. I'm really liking it so far. I might actually bring it up for uh, book club when we finish Decluttering at the Speed of Life. Speaking of that. I may have gone a little crazy getting rid of stuff in our house. <laughs> you already saw some of it, but then I went a little more crazy. Other than clothing that may or may not fit in the closet, well, clothing that doesn't fit right now, but I may or may not like down the road, there's not much else I could give away other than Scott. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't get rid of Scott for anything. I will stop yammering on. I appreciate you guys so very much. I hope you have an amazing Wednesday. Have a beautiful day today. Even if it's stressful, we can always be appreciative of the journeys we've had, the lessons we've learned, and where we're at and who we have in our lives. Because that is, I think for me, the biggest blessing is who we have in our life. All right, y'all. I appreciate you and I shall talk to you tomorrow. Bye.